When I was a kid, I saw the four kids One Piece commercials, and my immediate thought was, they look weird. I don't like the show. And man, what a fool that kid was. Just from the 10 months I've known One Piece, it just changed my life. 10% of my playlist is just One Piece music. I constantly think about it every day. Just everything about it is just breathtaking. The old 90s animation, the characters, the story about freedom, and that's what I love about it. And fast forward to June 2023, that was the month that I started watching everything One Piece. Every episode, every OVA, every special, in every movie. And right now, I just finished everything pre-time skip. And at the time of recording this, I'm watching the four kids dub, and I've seen the East Blue more times so than you can count. I'm like Professor X when it comes to the East Blue. And this entire video was my journey. So at the beginning of this compilation, there's gonna be mic stuff because I wasn't good at it. Still not. <laughs> I would like to thank people on this journey. First up is a channel called One Piece Archives. At the very beginning of this adventure is where this channel got me to watch the first OVA, the soccer short, and I think there's something else. But thanks to a Radio Times article where they have One Piece in almost exact order, a channel called DBK as they almost had a complete playthrough of One Piece Ocean's Dream, as later on I started playing the games as well. And their channel was the only place I saw that had somewhat of a playthrough of it. I probably wouldn't have been in the game without them. A huge thank you to several channels with their lo-fi music that I'll show right now. And lastly, you the viewer. Thank you for watching all of the content that's been One Piece so far, and many more along the way. With all that, thank you to everyone, and I hope you enjoyed the big compilation of me watching everything One Piece, free time skip. I'm watching every episode of One Piece till the series ends. That includes filler arcs, OVAs, and movies. Now let's start with the episodes 1 to 18. Starting with being introduced to the world like One Piece being the greatest treasure and the devil fruits giving unique powers. <laughs> but you can't swim. The beginning's about assembling the crew. Let's meet them. Luffy. Takes the backseat a lot, but he's overpowered so it's understandable. Zoro is the best character so far with his three sword style. It's, it's so cool. Nami's kind hearted but my god she loves money too much. Usopp. I haven't seen much from him yet, but he's the funniest and the smartest so far. The show can be slow, but my god, the art style is gorgeous. Might be nostalgic for the 90s atmosphere, but it aged well. We end with them having four members and getting their ship. Fun start for the series. The first OVA and movie. I know this looks like it's straight from an SRTV, but it still looks good to me. The story behind this is that they're hungry and get stranded on an island from an attack. They meet Meta. The pink hair girl who wants to rescue her father from Ganzak. Luffy defeats Ganzak and dies from an explosion and they explode their ship. Ends with them getting food and then life preserver saying thank you. Half of the first it starts with the crew being hungry meets a kid. Wait a minute. They're against El Dorago who likes gold and has the power screaming loud. He's looking for Wuhan. What are these names? Eventually they encounter Ganzak and Luffy defeats the pirate captain as usual. Ends with Nami gaining lots of treasure and they sail off into the sunset. Overall these are just longer episodes of the show but they have a different art style. Uh, the humor was more common than these, but I laughed a couple of times from it, so I'll keep it up. A new character on board, Sanji. He's a great character so far. Wants to find the all blue that has all the fish, basically. Everyone also got their backstories. Zoro's friend dies and has more motivation to become the best swordsman than being slashed by the greatest swordsman. Also, he's still cool. Usopp has great development and has new goggles. Let's go. Nami gets the saddest backstory, saves her town, and gets a new tattoo. Luffy gets development by having the most fight scenes. We meet more people too, which, yeah. They hit the Logue Town to get an episode dedicated to each of them and then leave to the Grand Line. The fat lady from the beginning became attractive and Buggy had two boring episodes thrown in, but still a weird villain. This series got so good and I'm only 5% of the way there. Probably less for making me watch OVAs and movies too. The movie begins with lots of fan service with titties everywhere. The whole mission is just to save Nami who's in a wedding dress. She's about to get married to some weird looking furry captain. Wild shenanigans, betrayals, and Luffy defeating the pirate captain as usual. But he also just destroys the island. Then they just leave after that, leaving them all homeless. How wonderful. Then he does that again in the short. When they're just dancing, he becomes a balloon or something. He destroys the disco and then they just destroyed everything and he just dances. We have this captain who got killed by his crewmates and now he's a weird bat trying to make someone kill like all these monsters are on this island. And of course there's a small kid in the plot as usual and then like he 
His mother is apparently the treasure or something. I don't know. That special was confusing. <laughs> just all three of these are just like me feel like I was overdosing on Xanax or something. We finished the East Blue Saga with a filler and a high definition recap special. How wonderful. Phil Ark has a child as the protagonist as usual who can speak to animals. Then the main villain, or at least one of the villains is a mukbang. The main villain is some weird guy with Sonic the Hedgehog looking glasses. And his final battle is just him dying in five minutes. Kind of lackluster. Out of the arc which is decent. And then the special is a two hour just HD high definition. And with that folks, we finished the East Blue. This may not be a perfect series so far. I mean kind of repetitive with the arcs but, but I don't know there's some kind of charm to it that just makes me want to keep on watching it it's like there has to be something there has to be a reason why people like recommend it so much where they're like oh you gotta wait till episode 300 to finally get into the series oh boy we're almost there character princess bb of the alabasta kingdom which i don't know what it is yet but people are hunting her down for just the kingdom to take over it i don't know how to describe these episodes because they're like so much faster maybe because they only get a couple of episodes compared to the last saga where it had like 10 episodes per island but like these felt like filler what the hell's the matter with you you damn bird we get another new character to the crew chopper the doctor and can we get much higher and his backstory is sad. Being neglected from humans and animals, he finally meets a friend, but then he is slowly dying from an illness. And then Chopper tries to heal him, but then he's poisoned. Then he just dies with a bang, saying he had a wonderful life. The main villain had an interesting power, but nothing else to him. He didn't even have many fight scenes. This arc was only 14 episodes, but I felt like there was so much happening in it. Mean new characters, and then Chopper, and the crazy old hag. A moment where I respected Luffy. And a subplot where Zoro was training because in the last arc he felt weak, what it seems like. But now folks, we head into the football short. It was just a nice short just seeing everyone, and especially longtime villains, just playing soccer. And Sanji had his one moment in a spotlight of being neglected for pretty much the whole time they've been in the Grand Line. Venison. So we meet Luffy's brother who is named Ace. He leaves, but he has the power of fire fisting. We also have the greatest villain so far, Crocodile. Vivi's character arc concludes in a very beautiful way. But speaking of, every single character gets a character arc in this. Even the people you don't expect. Yeah. Straw Hats get another new crew member, Nico Robin, which I already liked. Just everything about this arc was so beautiful. So what was the biggest weakness with this arc? The desert section. Just around four to six episodes just from walking through the desert with Luffy being the most unlikable character. But I mean, hey, it does have one of the most satisfying parts to it. Which after that part makes the plot keep on going again. And then the HD movies, pretty much the arc, except they went on two times speed. There's even some new scenes to it. And I think they accidentally spoiled Robin's backstory, but what are you gonna do? How great the arc ended. It makes you think that the rest of the show would be great, right? Well, after this, there's gonna be a lot of filler. The Chopper movie is something, though, right? It's about Chopper just not feeling like he's brave, even though the last arc proved that he can be brave. And then Chaos and Sirs, they lose track of Chopper. On the island, they meet a kid. What is with these movies and having a kid in it? And Chopper becomes king of the island. It's never told, but I think the villain has the same ability as the guy from the Drum Island arc. I mean, the movie's alright, it's nothing special. Then people say the post Alabasta arc is filler, but it looks like it's not. As it gives some kind of crucial information, and plus, you get to see more of Nico Robin's character, even though she just reads most of the time. But hey, it gives her character. And now, with all that being said, we finally finished the Alabasta saga. There are goats, and it's surprisingly a decent arc. But now it's time for the movies. These movies could be interesting since they start using CGI in some moments. I love the environment they have at the beginning, but then sadly, the middle and ends kind of where the movie falls off a little bit. So it starts off with them joining a race because, you know, money. So they get close to finishing the race. They get bamboozled because plot twist, it wasn't a race, instead of a trap. And the main villain is a rip-off crocodile. <laughs> but hey, it's still one of the best movies so far. Now the curse of the holy sword. They did my boy Zoro so bad. He made a childhood friend that we basically never knew about and he abandons everyone. Which his childhood friend being the villain is a pretty nice story. And there's not a kid, this one, it makes it even better. I mean, there could be a kid, but he looks more like a teenager, but I'll still take it. Ignore the fact that they destroyed Zoro's character in this movie. It was honestly a pretty good movie. Now, there's a pretty good special, honestly. Decent characters, Luffy isn't in it for most of it, and a great team finisher. What could possibly go wrong? I'll talk about it in the comments. Baseball shorts against Arlong? But well, Arlong basically wipes the floor against them until Luffy's plot armor swings in. The book that Robin's been reading turns out the foreshadow of this arc about a rainbow mist that is a void of space and time. And there's this kid in it, who would have guessed. That's annoying at first, but he eventually gets character development. And these villains have creative but wacky mecha suits. 
The arc ends with ship falling from the sky. The Jaya arc Jaya. had no right to be this good. And what's even more shocking is it's a Luffy arc. His first one. Bellamy was a great villain and an amazing defeat. So many returning characters come back for a split second. We even get many new side characters too. We get introduced to Whitebeard, Blackbeard. Great side characters. They even get Toucan Sam on board. And after some modifications, they're finally able to get the Skypea. And seeing how great this arc was, I cannot wait for Skypea. Should you skip Skypea? No, of course not. There are so many people who skip Skypea because they think it's filler. Or many others who just don't enjoy the arc but it's honestly one of the more unique arcs i've seen we have dials that can do many kinds of things we have this new ability an absolutely wonderful villain the arc's version of vv who is just as good as her as a character and there are so many jokes with this arc too it seems like such an important arc and i wonder why people skip it we say goodbye to the Sky Island Saga with G.A. Arc and Secret Island Movie. It comes as no shock that I enjoyed G.A. Arc. I think about it was just so fun. The main villain was just having a good time. Everyone having the spotlight and having many jokes along the way. And after all this fun, the Secret Island Movie is one of the darkest One Piece movies. <laughs> we have the Straw Hat crew dying. Child murder. Seeing Luffy being pissed. A villain who just wants his crew back. My paralysis demon. And a unique animation. So far one of the best movies. And this is also the last time we'll see the original eye catchers many people don't like this arc which is not as bad as they say it's like one piece olympics but what gets this arc down is the pacing and the villains some of the events just felt like filler and foxy was a decent villain just another wacky villain but how could you not like this arc it has afro luffy as for one piece protect it starts off strong this time it's one piece in the theater which reminds me of something as they help someone with their last performance not a bad special we have new eye catchers which is just luffy new animation and is now in widescreen there's a one piece game that became an art that nobody knows about so i've decided to play it and <laughs> It didn't go so well. It wasn't bad, just slow. But what makes it funny is, the arc was so much better. Robin was a protagonist, and we actually had a Luffy vs. Zoro fight. So, decent game, not a bad arc. Foxy's back, and so is the Afro. But he's not here for long, because the rest of the arc we just meet a JoJo reference. Who was already an interesting character. And it seems like we get a lot more focus on Robin this time, talking about how dangerous she is. Even in the Mecha movie, she has some spotlight, which is just them looking for treasure, until the villain just wants to take over the world with the giant turtle as an island which was a good movie and next time we'll watch the highly rated water 7 water 7 where do i even begin so there's trains that can float on water in a whole city full of shipwrights and we get to meet a few of them oh wait yep they're the bad guys of the group and the main villain is a furry which they take robin with them heading towards her backstory later on we also meet frankie who i can't take seriously he reminds me of someone and the second half of the arc is just sanji the show because he's just the main character on the train but we all know what you want to hear so after we hear the sad news that the going merry is at its limits they won't be able to make it to the next island they have to get another ship which finally means development for Usopp to take a stand for himself and have the Luffy versus Usopp battle possibly one of the greatest fights so far but don't worry there's this new character I hope he joins the crew and the best part is this is all a setup arc just to head towards the main arc Enos Lobby's Enos Lobby changed to One Piece forever continue Continuing the quest to save Robin and having one of the best backstories and one of the greatest moments in One Piece so far. Everyone gain an upgrade or some kind of power up and then there's Chopper. And then Luffy having one of the best fights so far and activating gear 2 and gear 3. And then and after everything the Going Merry comes back and saves them. But this is where we say our final goodbyes to the Going Merry because she can no longer continue on so they just decide to burn the ship and you know one piece is special when they make you cry over a ship but what comes after the greatest one piece arc well we got rough mcruff turned out to be luffy's grandpa i totally didn't expect grandpa? who talks about luffy's dad being monkey d dragon kobe's back who also lord dumps about the new world and the four emperors we meet shanks and whitebeard who clash together and then there's filler but after that all the straw hats now have a bounty frank joins the team Usopp joins the team they get a new ship the thousand sunny as they head towards fishman island but then it ends with ace versus blackbeard which they say is important later we got another chopper movie the one with the famous meme but it's in an alternate universe this time. Same story, tragic backstory, but there's different events like Robin, Frank, and the Thousand Sunny being there. A new purple haired dude who is brother to the ticket muncher who plans to bomb the island with poison. I mean, it's a more interesting villain and a great fight. 
Chopper gets to fight. So this movie is just a revamped Drum Island arc, except there was overdosed on speed. It's an interesting concept having a whole family of bounty hunters. We never see bounty hunters in the show. Sadly, they're all kind of weak, except for the boss. He's at least kind of tough. We get to have a nice tour of the ship now and all of its new features and a whole side quest of trying to get the flag back. And it has some good humor. Zoro getting lost again with the crew. And them trying to cover up that the flag was stolen. And then Frankie's guard attack. Rather interesting filler, to say the least. Chopper Man has a whole spin-off manga, uh, ending short, and now a whole new special. Chopper's main attacks are just turned being adorable, as he faces against the evil version of Usopp and his minions. That ends with a wrestling match that he cheats with, and then he summons a giant Frankie bot, and then a Luffy bot appears and gets it. It's a very creative take on the characters, you know. Mackie spent off to say the least. Thriller Bark is the most underrated arc. There were so many good moments that happened. And one of the most positive things about this arc is that it is so hilarious. Usopp's fight, and it was great in general. And then after 350 something episodes, there was finally a teamwork battle against Luffy's shadow. And then when all else fails, Luffy gets a new and becomes Nightmare Luffy and just beats the crap out of it. And then once they beat the main villain who was very overshadowed, and comes another warlord who is a robot and foreshadows Egg Island and then basically gave Zoro one of his greatest moments so far. And then after all of that, we meet a skeleton named Brooke at the beginning and then he joins the team as the musician. I just don't know why people sleep on this arc. It was so fun. After breaking every bone in their body, we get ourselves a beach episode! And Foxy's back. And then Luffy proceeds to destroy the island. Seems a little deja vu. And then we get a filler episode about Brooke trying to fit in. It's a nice relaxing episode, just having the Straw Hats be lazy, do their hobbies and stuff. And then of course it ends with a beautiful melody. This is probably the worst arc in One Piece. It just feels like nothing happens and the Straw Hats weren't really involved with the plot. It was just pirates trying to steal a beetle who Luffy wants to fight a bunch. He promises to return later to finish the fight. And Deja Vu comes again. The arc is called Little East Blue. But the purpose is more so about teasing Strong World actually. So OVA also teases the Strong World later on. Another advertisement for this Strong World movie. Episode 0 is more so about the past actually. So in the glory days with Gold Roger sailing out to sea, along with showing young Shanks, Buggy being a coward, Garp in his prime as well, and other characters in the past. But it's mainly about the villain of the Strong World movie, Craven the Hunter of the universe, and his connections, friendships with Roger, and how he wanted to be the one to defeat him, but he couldn't make it in time because he was an impel down and escaping before Roger got to his demise. He even showed the past of how Sanji's mom called him a cursed child, and someone who I thought was Robin, but is someone else apparently. Strong World is the best movie so far. First off, the movie looks so gorgeous, and surprisingly the focus is on Nami, which she did have focus in the past, but not to this degree in some time. As the main villain captures her and forces her to be his navigator, as he uses his gravity powers to lift islands in the sky and create his own Jumanji to destroy the East Blue, and that's when the Straw Hats get suited up and their outfits look so good, and Luffy just absolutely destroys this man. No wonder there was so much advertisement for this movie, it was fantastic. A One Piece and Nissan crossover. So it was a 3D animation about Brooke giving a tour around the Thousand Sunny while Luffy is looking for his hat, but that's for another time. And we get to see places that we haven't seen. And then the video pauses and gives music that sounds like it's from Among Us. But that's not why you're here, because they have a commercial with the Nissan model that's in the colors of the Thousand Sunny. And there's even a real life one. One Piece is in 3D. <gasps> Luffy's hat is missing. But it turns out it was stolen by a dog who can turn into an eagle. Very cute, by the way. And they get captured by the Marines by a rude admiral and three giants with them, which gets another team up to happen. And then get the hat. Surprisingly, it was good. It kind of reminds me of a 3DS game. It was fun to watch. So there's another One Piece 3D short. But this time they get chased down by a Marine ship with a whole crew of those Kung Fu seals from the Alabasta arc. But then, it's a trap. as the trap is a giant castle seashell that looks like a Disney ride that overdose as I easily get through it. Same with the other 3D shorts. Pretty good animation. But I didn't have my 3D glasses. The Romance Dawn movie is the original predecessor of One Piece that is now adapted into a movie. But well, it's in the present with Luffy being tasked with food hunting. But then he runs into a town with Silk who was like Nami but then isn't. 
is they come across the most dickish captain that just destroys Luffy's hat and a whole town just the embodiment of a Twitter user. And then because of that, Luffy just destroys his career. It feels like a pilot with the whole value of treasure that was mentioned all the way back in East Blue that never got mentioned again and was an enjoyable 30 minute movie. This is an alternate universe of One Piece with the setting and Luffy being a chief slash boss. Guess this is a timeline where he's a marine in a way. But the main pro of these episodes is having characters we haven't seen in a bit return and interact again or somewhat reenact the arcs as well. We even have Buggy be the villain for most of it when the actual anime lied to me. Friends, welcome to the Salvador Archipelago, a glorious place before the new world. All the new friends alike. Come see the wonders of our park with many attractions aboard. If you want to get dangerous, you can find this nice dandy spot home to our auctions with all kinds of sales, and if you're lucky, you get yourself a nice mermaid. But that's not all, as we witness a celestial dragon get decked in the face as we watch the Straw Hats face Kuma once again. And watch them all go out one by one. So come to the Salvadori Archipelago for funnel cakes and human trafficking. So after getting teleported away from his crew, he lands an Amazon lily, an island with only women. Basically, if the island was full of swift and we encountered a princess, Hancock, who people fall for, and I don't know why. But what's great about this arc is that it's consistent, since it's just Luffy the show now, mainly focused on him and the island. He continues the dark themes as well, as it ends with Luffy decide on saving Ace rather than going back to his crew. Hope the other Straw Hats get these kind of arcs right. <laughs> so we get to see what happened to the other Straw Hats and the Goth Girl. And they all kind of coordinate to their hobbies, some don't. But there's a big complaint I have with this. Every Straw Hat only gets like half an episode dedicated to them. And then the beginning of it is just them with Luffy eating food and Hancock's fantasies. And then the second part of this arc is after it impaled down. So I have to wait till that. The pacing's weird. <laughs> So now Luffy goes to prison and meets tons of people we haven't seen in forever, including the man himself, Bon Clay. We even get to see new faces. Jimbe! Ark had no right to be this good. He was always going. Constant action. Threatening villain. Seeing Blackbeard be a pussy again. And one of the greatest sacrifices at the ending. He's probably going up there as one of the best arcs for me so far, which is so fun. So I'm still very mixed about this. It's nice to see the Straw Hats on their adventures, but I feel like nothing happens to most of them, or they just don't feel finished at all. Only one that felt finished was Robins, and honestly, I was the best one. And it's weird how they divide it up into two parts, rather than just being one episode or Straw Hat. I really want to enjoy these, because it gives the other Straw Hats some time to shine. They should have gotten their own mini arcs. One Piece crossover. Yes, they had a crossover with another anime. It's about Tariko, a gourmet hunter trying to make the best food in the world, along with Sanji, Nami, and Chai because forget the rest of them are defeating beast and eating food and then after defeating the big bad monster it turns out the whole island is just a giant pudding and then they eat the whole thing it was a fun but weird crossover to say marine ford arc i admit it's one of the best one piece arcs granted it starts off pretty slow but then when luffy drops in from the battle bus everything starts getting better just tons of action everywhere non-stop seeing luffy face people he never faced before it was absolutely breathtaking but then Ace dies. And immediately after that, so does Whitebeard. Then everything turns around. Blackbeard steals his power. Everyone barely escapes and the Marines won. One of the best arcs have one of the most bittersweet endings as well. Now after the tear jerker that was Marine Ford arc, Luffy and Jinbei escape on the Beatles reference. And we head into the post-war arc. Is it any good? Well, there are pros and cons to this arc. Pop some popcorn, dab it in thick butter, as I watch everything one piece as we go through the post-war arc. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, taking my flaccid cock out and exposing the truth about this. I didn't like Luffy at first, which is absolute blasphemy, and I should be called an imbecile for it or a Neanderthal, but, but I don't know when, but all of a sudden I just adored him. He was one of my favorite characters now. In fact, probably all of fiction. That and of course we have one thing in common. We're always hungry. So after all the Straw Hat crew got sent to Brazil, Luffy was the main focus of this whole arc and I was really excited about it. Couldn't wait to see what was up next on this standalone adventure and of course we know what happens next and so in the post-war we got more about luffy and the backstory about how he got dropped off at the tiny toons orphanage and just bonded with ace and someone else this is also a top of hat guy named sabo so why wasn't he in this it's time to learn your place <laughs> oh yeah i'm calling bullshit if one piece taught me anything is that if there's an explosion they survive somehow. And my only game theories is that he's a cyborg like Kuma 
or somehow Out Sabo survived. Turned. Other than that, the whole backstory is just him having a fun time. Owen Hancock's here, and Jinbei just casually around, and drowns. And this all seemed good, freshly baked from little Debbie's herself, but there's a big con with this arc. Luffy! 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 So after Saba Odi, I thought the same thing would happen to the Straw Hats. They would get their own little miniature arc, two to three episodes, about them there, receive news about Luffy, and then that's it. But instead they do this weird pacing thing where it's like half an episode for each of them, but before Impel Down, and then after Impel Down, and then during the post-war, which can make sense, but I feel like it would be a whole lot better if they had their own arcs. So instead of them bouncing off the walls like that weird, like, sticky hand, they should have their own episodes for their time to shine. As an example, so, uh, first episode, he crash lands, meets gothic Mary Poppins, Fights the planet of the apes in an episode. Second episode, he meets Mihawk, tells him Ace is dead, as he tries to get back to Luffy as best he can, and it probably ends with more monkeys. And then third episode, after days of trying, he finally gets the newspaper telling him about the secret message. Instead of three days, two years. And then BAM! Arc ends. Like, I know the anime is known for being slower than monotonous. This was just some weird pacing to say. But then the ending was so good. So Luffy decides to train with the old man and is going to learn the three types of hockey as he's put his hat on a rock and the music starts playing and then off to the new world. Oh, an amazing way to end the pre-time skip, but we're not done. There's still got one more special. Three days and two years special. Who would have thought? After nine long months, I finally watched everything One Piece pre-time skip, with the final obstacle being 3D TOI movie, which is hard to tell if it's in the pre-time skip because it's like in between. Now scrolling one day, I saw a Crunchyroll article that said it was One Piece DLC. So is this DLC the perfect way to end pre-time skip or simply just a flop that shouldn't exist? Well, as I watch everything One Piece, this is a 3D TOI movie, Ace's death, Luffy's vows to his friends. So let's perfectly start off with this. I don't think I should know most of the stuff that happens in this movie. Yeah, because this came out in 2024, it does have some minor spoilers I shouldn't know about. Except for the end credits. I was told never to watch that. It has massive spoilers. But the stuff I wasn't supposed to know or see was Bucky being a warlord and seeing Luffy use Armin Hockey and something else I won't say yet. Speaking of Luffy, he's the same character that we all know and love, except he doesn't have his hat, of course, and he's now he's rocking in a jacket. Still continuing his training, of course. And it still continues the Luffy solo adventure, as none of the other Straw Hats appear. But there is someone who has a major spotlight in this movie, Hancock, with new noises along the way. And... <laughs> yep. Yeah, from what I heard, the post time skip has a lot of cleavage to say. I mean, I'm not complaining, but I'm wondering how and why. <laughs> now that I'm making noises and showing off her ballistics, Hancock has a major part in the story as she fights alongside Luffy for most of it. Shows off her strength and give a pro from the movie. But the main reason why she's here is because the plot of the story is it's a rescue mission to save her sisters from a main villain named World. <laughs> Who looks like Blackbeard if he was from Clash of Clans. <laughs> At the beginning, it looked like he had CP9 abilities and make things big. And the villain's whole backstory is he's traveling alongside the best friend of his and just go on their pirate adventure, getting more crew members, big bounty, but then he's betrayed by them. Whereas it feels like to him, and he wants to fire a cannon. <laughs> There's just a lot of random characters like Buggy from before, the warlord now, Rona, even though she's with Mihawk, like just appeared out of nowhere. I don't know why, but it says in my notes I took for the movie, it just says Minecraft. And I will say this about the movie, it does look breathtaking, like it's animated very well. Of course, all the One Piece movies are animated well. I still remember Blockwork, that was such a fun movie to watch, how animated it was, the one that was traumatizing, that was a unique style. Some of the HD remake arcs for reasons, so I'd say the movie's on top with those. But the best one to me so far is still Strong World, that movie looked breathtaking. And surprisingly, the movie felt very short, because the movie was just a whole boss rush, just felt like it was constantly non-stop action, with Buggy being the like comic relief to give some space in and after all the fights comes the final one with Luffy versus World, where it seems like he might lose. But because it's Luffy, he doesn't get knocked out. It's like that Captain America quote. I could do this all day. And then finally Luffy does the finishing blow with a new technique that I wasn't also supposed to know called Red Hawk. That was so cool. <laughs> His fish was on fire just 
Whoosh. But I'm also wondering how, because he mentions it's Ace's flame, so like a spiritual connection. <laughs> and then World still tries to use the big ending cannon to destroy the Marines. That gets obliterated in 10 seconds by Mihawk. <laughs> so that plotline was pointless. More fan service with Hancock and then boom, movie ends. I mean, yeah, as the Crunchyroll article said, it is a One Piece DLC. Where it's a nice in-between between all that's happened so far and all that will happen so far. So it really excites me for post timescape in Fishman Island. And even though I said we're done with the pre-timescape, there's still the games to go with. Nothing else. Attitudes, the pits. Cherry, peach, or apricot? Absolutely nothing. I'm go low! What's all that noise? Sanji's lollipop. I want to find out what he's always slurping on. Unfortunately, that we gotta go through that too. Cause I gotta watch everything One Piece. The prequel to One Piece came out, except it's more about swords, dragons, and actual killing. With a little reference at the end, that still surprised me. It doesn't feel like One Piece, but I like the change. The main characters are fun, and this one scene, ah. Uh, Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. Reminds me of the Romance Dawn movie I watched recently. <gasps> it's all connected! This is the fastest way to watch One Piece. It's a fan project that made some arcs cut in half. So you don't have to watch the same backstory over and over again. And goes at the same pacing as the manga. Sadly, I can't use it because I gotta watch everything, including the stuff you want to forget. It's called One Pace. Clever name. You should go check it out. I don't know how to describe these noodle commercials, but they're the best commercials I've ever seen. Zoro's backstory and motivation about why he wants to be the greatest swordsman ever to exist. Smoky noodles. Vivi being a loner, but then slowly developing as a character and being friends with the Straw Hats. Noodles. Arlong Park being one of the greatest arcs in developing Nami as a character and showing her tragic backstory and staying up against Arlong. Cheesy curry, baby! I don't know the last one, but when there's war, there's noodles. Joking aside, these are the best commercials I've ever seen and how creative they are. Taking a high school lifestyle and making it a One Piece arc. This is the very first One Piece game. How thrilling. A building based RPG where you constantly make tracks for the ship and the characters when they fight each other. Then there are side modes where you just gamble. The game is called One Piece Become the Pirate King. It's not bad if you understand what's happening. Give it a shot. One Piece! Grand Battle! So, what's so grand about it? Well, there's a gauntlet style mode where you beat up random characters in the versus mode against a CPU or if you, if you have friends. The second player. That's the whole thing. It's a small package game, but it's a very enjoyable time for a nice 30 minutes or so. 